Here's a question for you. What is Nintendo known for? Lots of people would probably give many different answers. Maybe it's for innovative games. Maybe it's for brilliant level design. For some of you nerds out there, like myself, it might even be accidental depth on a fighting game. Either way, there's no doubt about it. Nintendo makes great games. But while they excel at creating games, it's definitely frustrating to be a Nintendo fan in current times. They are simultaneously 10 years ahead of the industry, but also 10 years behind. And apart from terrible communication with their fans, one of Nintendo's biggest flaws is undoubtedly their online. Just ask any Smash Ultimate fan. But this isn't a video about Smash. To be quite frank, this isn't even a video about a competitive game. This is a video about something else. A video about Mario Maker 2. A wonderful game that allows players to express their creativity, or lack thereof, in a fun and engaging way. But also, a game that's often forgotten as a multiplayer game. A versus mode isn't the first thing that comes to most people's minds when someone mentions Mario Maker. And yet, it has it. And, to be honest, it's not often great. As is usually the case with Nintendo Online, the lag is pretty damn bad. And as it's not very popular, matchmaking can sometimes take a while. And yet, there's still people who play it. So, more than about the game, this video is about one of the players. A man known as Simple Flips. Oh shit, one plus one equals three. Oh shit! Why? That doesn't make sense. Oh, it's two! Oh, <laughs> but, above all else, this is a video about one random laggy match on one not very popular game mode in a pointless quest to get to the top without a rush. This is a video about walkies and the biggest mind game I've ever seen. If you're not familiar with Simple Flips, well, just know that a great entertainer he is. I've been watching him for years. He used to be a Mario 64 speedrunner, but more recently, he's been playing a lot of Mario Maker on his YouTube channel. One of the series he has is called Walkies, where he tries to reach S rank on multiplayer versus without using the run button. It's a dumb premise, and at first I didn't think it would be for me, but here I am, god knows how many episodes later, still watching every single time they drop. It's dumb fun, honestly. And he's so close to S rank too. At this point, it just feels like an inevitability. I sometimes almost hope it won't happen soon, because that would mean the series has to end. Only sometimes though. What can I say? I'm invested. But why? Why embark on such a silly challenge? More importantly, why are thousands of people coming back every week to watch it? I think I can propose a possible answer. To do so though, we're gonna have to head to possibly my favorite match of the entire series, and it's a pretty recent one. What I like to call the Crossroads Gambit. Coming right out of a loss, Simple Flips was, understandably, slightly bummed. The reason for that loss? Pretty simple. I'll let Mr. Flips himself explain it. Straight from the get-go, I enforced a strategy that probably didn't have a high win rate not using the run button. He queues up again and finds himself facing a new level. Junior is easy? A Bowser Junior level? Bro. The countdown begins, and already, it's looking bad. A laggy lobby. A really laggy lobby, in fact. Nintendo's online strikes once again. This is miserable. Nintendo, why? To begin the level, they had to enter a green pipe. Because he didn't have the run button, Simple was the second to last to enter. 
only because Toad threw Mario at the beginning. This, as most things during this match, was crucial. Had Mario not been the last to enter, the results could have been completely different. They all come out of the pipe, Toad leading the pack. But he flies too close to the sun, and by trying to rush, dies to a Koopa almost immediately. The game continues, with Simple being last. But by avoiding the top platform and jumping directly to the left, he manages to take a small lead against Mario. Realizing this mid-air, he proceeds to then try and body block Mario. It seemingly makes no difference, and Simple even jokes about it. Blocks Mario? Hmm, shows him that I have the I'm a firebender. But his play turns out to be brilliant, as this slightly messes up Mario's momentum causing him to die to a Galumba. Maybe if the game hadn't been so laggy, Mario would have just held forward and survived. But he doesn't. And so, lag seemingly takes its first victim, as does the Galumba. And this isn't the last time a Galumba commits a war crime in this match. Because right as Simple goes through the pipe, he sees Luigi's been brutally murdered. Classic Luigi Blender. And with that, Simple is in the lead. Easy win, right? Well, not quite. See, Luigi grabbed the checkpoint right before he died, which means he'll be respawning closely behind Simple. This is where the walkie's disadvantage really comes in. Simple can't run, and so can't maintain his advantage as easily. In a linear level like this, it's not enough for Simple to play better than everyone once. He has to do it multiple times. To truly outplay them in this situation, he has to get in their heads. And god damn did he get in Luigi's head. Let's assess the situation. Luigi just respawned right above Simple Flips. But Simple has a fire flower and the area they're in is two blocks high. This means he can body block anyone that tries to cross it and slow them down. And below, a crossroads, left or right. There's no way to tell, but Mario Maker level goals have some special properties. First, the level has to be built to the left of the goal. This means the finish line is almost always to the right. Secondly, it has to be in the overworld. Well, Simple knows he's in the overworld because he crossed two pipes. And while he can't be fully certain, assuming there are no doors, the goal is to the right. So all he has to do is go that way. Except, while Luigi may be unable to overtake him while in this area, the moment they cross this block, the ceiling becomes higher, and so, Luigi can just use his run button speed to jump over Simple. It's unwinnable. Yet another loss to the rules of the series. Unless he can come up with a play. And that's where the lag comes in again. The game is running almost at slow motion, giving him time to plan things out. We have a lot of time to think about our decisions. Could he leave the Galumbas as traps? No, there's no way he could without getting hit himself. And then, right as he's about to cross, a thought pops into Simple's head. Can I game Luigi here? When I go off screen and he goes off screen, can I make him think I thought this was a dead end? Simple has an idea. As Luigi goes off screen from Simple's perspective, the same thing happens from Luigi's point of view to Simple. This means that, for a few seconds, Luigi doesn't know what Simple did. And Mr. Flips takes advantage of those seconds to their fullest. He decides to try and trick Luigi. The Crossroads Gambit is in motion. Here's how it works. By body blocking Luigi and pretending to want to go to the left, he both stops Luigi's progress and makes him think that the left is the correct path. Why would Simple try to go there otherwise? It takes some convincing. I saw a key door, Luigi, you idiot. Luigi, there's a key door over there. 
Dumbass. But eventually, Luigi falls for it. Luigi's in full flight mode. Luigi's in full flight mode. Luigi has been dealt with. But there's a new threat now. Toad and Mario came in. Thankfully, Toad quit out because he's a bitch. But Mario is still there. However, he saw Luigi running to the left. Perhaps he'll follow too. Regardless, there's no time to stay and find out. Simple just has to go for it. The question remains, however. Did Mario fall for it too? More importantly... What is even over here? What if the level's just over? As if to answer his question, the first few blocks of the goal show up. It's the end of the level. It's actually winnable. But then, disaster strikes. Mario saw through it and went the right way. Plus, unlike Simple, he has the run button. He can catch up. It's the same situation that would have happened with Luigi, but with a slightly bigger lead. Because remember, Mario died. Had Toad not thrown Mario at the beginning, he wouldn't have been last to enter. Had that not happened, Simple wouldn't have had the chance to block him. And if Simple hadn't blocked him, he would have had a really good shot at easily taking the win. But that doesn't matter now. They're both racing towards the finish line, but Mario is gaining ground, and quickly. Simple has to go for a play here, or the game is for sure lost. But there's nothing he can do. He just has to hope for the best. He hits the jump button, looking to strike one of those war criminals right in the head. But those Galumbas start to look small, as Bowser Jr. shows up at the end as the final enemy. But the title of the level, Junior is Easy, couldn't be more accurate. As, unlike full-sized Bowser, you can just jump over Bowser Jr. Both of them can. Small bounce on the Galumba, and then straight for King Koopa's own son. Simple is on his way to the goal, but so is Mario, and they're now next to each other. Mario jumps seven frames after Simple leaves the ground, and Simple desperately tries to bounce on top of him to send him downwards and kill him. But just barely, he fails, and Mario takes the lead. And that's it. Close game either way, but the opportunity slipped away. Except... Einstein once said, God doesn't play dice with the universe. I'm not to say whether that's true or not, but thank the heavens we are not God, because sometimes a high roll is all we need. Wait, bounce him over the axe, bounce him over! Get the fuck out of here, Mario! This is mine! <laughs> Dude, we did it! We stole the win from Luigi! This is the greatest level of all time! This is the greatest walking play that's ever happened! I can't believe it! This is the most insane level of all time! Luigi ran away! I can't believe it! Against all odds, he took it home. I love this match for many reasons. One of them is the fact that the amount of small decisions made by everyone involved directly affected the ending. Also the fact that Simple truly outplayed everyone here. But most importantly, just because of how much fun I had watching it, I legitimately couldn't breathe from how much I was laughing by the end. It was great. And I think that's where I find what we were looking for. Why does Simple Flips do this challenge? There's no logical reason apart from a silly premise for a YouTube series. Why do we watch it? We could do productive things in that time, instead of getting distracted. And the most burning question of all, why make a 17 minutes long YouTube documentary about it? Such a serious approach to something that is so insignificant and seemingly random, it's without a doubt the stupidest project I've ever embarked on. And it was insignificant, by the way. It was just one match of hundreds. Hell, he lost the points he won from it immediately after. From a numbers standpoint, there's nothing special about it. But it still feels special. 
doesn't it? The answer to all of those questions isn't too complicated at all. We do it simply because it's fun. Simple Flips is a good entertainer, and part of the reason I made this is as a thank you to him and the entire team behind him. A lot of my humor comes from his channel. More than any other content creator, he shaped what I find funny, which is a pretty big deal, I think. Of course, he's not someone I know, but it's not about that. I know his content, and I wanted to appreciate it as such. Content. I genuinely haven't been able to find somewhere else with the same humor style as Simple Flips. But as much as I wanted to thank the Simple Flips team, the true main reason I made this was personal, only to benefit myself. I wanted to do something pointless for once. I had an urge to create something and show it to the world. And maybe you hated it, maybe you loved it, but I'll be damned if I didn't enjoy making it and I'll be damned if I won't thank you for watching it either way. So go out there and do something pointless. Don't put any pressure on yourself, just do it for fun and forget about everything else for a little while. Do something bold or silly or just plain stupid. Ideally, all of those combined. And hey, maybe you'll learn a thing or two about yourself. Even if you don't though, that's okay too. As long as you had fun doing it, I think it was worth it. Hey everyone, Unscripted Robin here. Just wanted to thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this, share this with people. Uh, that would mean a lot. If this video does well, I might do a part two. I'm not promising anything, but someone suggested I should do the five win streak for walkies, which I might. And also hit me up with other ideas if you have them, because I'm not gonna do walkies only content. If something cool comes up, I'll just do it if I like it. Anyway, follow me on Twitter at Robin Nash Nash. I post dumb stuff over there. If you want to talk to me, just hang out. I'll reply to everything, so just hit me up. Check out my music. You're listening to it right now, and you were during the intro as well. I have a channel with just my music. I'm going to be uploading a lot more there. I don't stream, but my friends do, so if you want to catch me live, check out their Twitch channels. They're fun people, and they make good content. And yeah, I do editing, music, and translation to French, Spanish, and English. Hit me up if you need help with anything. And buy Simple's merch, because it looks cool. If someone from the Simple Flips team is watching and you like this, share this with the others. That would mean a lot. And if you didn't, let me know why. I, I take criticism. That's about it. Uh, thank you, everyone. See ya. Johnny B, you fucking dunce.